Hey, I'm back. Sorry, I've been uh, sitting on the few episodes for a while now. I'm very backed up. Um, speaking of which, I was scheduled to get an enema done in June, but uh, with COVID now, everything's backed up, you know? <laughs> and I do mean everything! But this week, I have the immense pleasure of releasing this episode that I filmed a while back with Simone Holder. Simone is one of my favorite new comics in the city. She's been killing it on stages across the city and from here to Montreal on Zoom shows during the pandemic. Uh, so let's check it out. Beer on you, I knocking know. you over with an umbrella. <laughs> yeah, this is fun. <laughs> yeah, this is great. Let's do it again. This is bit. great. Yeah, like... let's do it again. I'm not insured. I don't have the liability insurance for this. So I can't. <laughs> exactly. I'm not responsible for any injuries happening on, as a guest on my podcast. Physical or psychological? Or psychological, yeah. exactly. I'm not sure which would be worse. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Actually, I think I'd prefer to be taken out by an umbrella than, you know, psychological <laughs> damage. Scarred. Yeah, yeah. Be scarred uh, for life. <laughs> yeah, because therapy is more expensive than just a trip to the ER, exactly. you know. <laughs> All right. Hey, let's save some of the good stuff. We're <laughs> burning for, through for material. Like, geez. <laughs> All right, let me just do a quick clap. All right, welcome back to another episode of Happy Hour with Sad Comedians. I'm here today with Simone Holder. Hello. Thank you so much for joining me at Montana's on Bank Street. Cheers. Cheers. Can't you only what? touch the bottom. Yeah, Kink. there you go. <laughs> it's another beautiful day in the capital. Mm -hmm. We missed the rain, which is great. Yeah, no, it just turned out perfectly. Um, yeah, I've been really, uh, I've been wanting to have you on the show. Oh, really? And uh, to tell you that you were actually a big inspiration in my starting my own podcast. Oh, wow. That's great to hear. Uh, because you had uh, DM'd me. You slid in my DM to ask me to be on your podcast. Yes. And, and you turned me down. I did. And I felt like, you know what? And, I'll, and now I get to explain why. Uh, I felt like I didn't have enough experience to offer because I've been only doing comedy for less than two years now. Uh, and you know, you were interviewing people like, you know, like Tavis and a bunch of people that have a lot of experience and asking questions like, Oh, any tips for new comedians? And I felt like, I don't know what, I don't have any experience. I don't know what to say to that. But then I thought about it like, Oh, maybe I can talk about like psychology. I, you know, I have an undergrad psychology. I love psychology and mental health and with the link of com comedy. And, uh, it's like, yeah, maybe I can do a comedy podcast and, uh, then I'll have Simone on mine, <laughs> but now if you want me on yours, I can yes. definitely do. All right. I'll be doing season two, maybe some, sometime in August. Okay. And I would love for you to be All on. Right. Uh, that's a deal. I would love I'll, for you to be on. I'll be on. This okay, time sure. good. Right. Thank you. Cause so I was glad. like, uh, you have lots to offer, but I was like, he said, no, I'm not going to push it. No, it no is a complete sentence. <laughs> I'm not going to harass him. So. No, it's... <laughs> I was just self-conscious about the fact that, you know, you you know, you know had some really good guests on there that had really worthwhile stuff to say about comedy. And I was like, I don't know what I could add to this. Like, you know. Well, the way I saw it is like I'm coming up to a year. It'll be a year for me in uh, September. And like I just wanted perspectives from like all levels, like people right. who've been doing it. Because I had people say like, like Trevor or Paul, what's oh what's his last name paul ash from montreal right paul ash has been doing it for 20 plus years yeah, yeah you know and then i interviewed people who started around the same time i did you know or have a year or two more than i do yeah but everybody brings something unique and something different to to the show so that that's the perspective i was i was going for and i guess it's true <laughs> that we all probably bring different perspectives and even lessons that people who've been doing it for 20 years probably forgot about you know it's like well you probably forgot about all your trials and tribulation of your first yeah. year and then it's true it's good to have different people yeah. at different at places different on the learning yeah. curve and yeah that's true mm -hmm. okay yeah now i, I had, get it because i had like some standard questions that i'd ask everyone yeah. but then depending on where the conversation goes you know i could ask a whole you know, go on a different tangent and ask different questions, you right, know, right. so it, it depend it depends on who I'm talking to and where the conversation goes. But, um, like in terms of talking about comedy, everybody has a perspective, right? you know, because we all got into it for whatever reason and we all have different styles and different, you know, the topics we talk about are different and our styles and approaches are, are unique. So it was just that, that, aspect of it that I wanted to capture. 
We'll you know? <laughs> we'll get into that a little more, but I gotta say you are a, you are putting in the work. Oh, I gotta thank say, you. like you know, you've been doing a lot of Zoom shows mm -hmm. throughout the pandemic. Uh, yeah. I see you uh, doing uh, podcasts and, and Zoom things with with Don Janklin. Yeah, really good stuff. Black Don Crack. Yeah, is it still going on? It's still going on. We um, had a little bit of a break for a couple of weeks, and then we resumed uh, recording on Saturday. And we got uh, Zoom bomb. Zoom bomb. I saw by, like, that. Wasn't that was ugly? Insane. It was insane. Like we were just like in that the moment. That was like scary to it me. Was scary. It was like, fuck. I'm yeah. really sorry to happen. Yeah, to you, that, was that was awful. Insane. But in the moment, I was just. I guess you saw my face. I just went, and my thing was like, just shut them down. Just get them off. And yeah, it wasn't until yeah. like hours later that I felt hurt and I felt oh, wounded God. and I felt yeah. really, really terrible. Yeah. You know, because it was just. It was awful. Yeah. It was, no, it was horrible. It was very terrible. <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah. And it was pretty, uh, it was scary. Like it was in the moment. Like I remember just seeing my, like my reaction and then I'm just trying to shut it down. And we were a little rattled after, but we just kept going. Right. Yeah. You guys kept your cool and yeah. you're very, you know, poised about mm -hmm. the whole thing. We, uh, you know, we tried but. to do that. And, um, at first we were going to cut it out and, then at the end, I said to Don, I said, you know what, I'll take out, because the first image that came on was um, a body on a sidewalk getting riddled with bullets. Jesus. It was horrifying. Yeah, yeah. So I cut that out because nobody needed to see that. But I no. wanted to keep the rest in because I said, you know, people need to see that this happens, that this happens and how random it can be, how unprovoked it could be and yeah, how yeah. ugly it could be. Yeah. You know, that that's why I said, you know what, I'll take out the shooting, but I'm leaving everything else in because it needs to be seen. Yeah. You know, it's shocking. It was disgusting. And that was the impact I wanted it to have just yeah. beca because like a lot of people don't understand they, they know the concept of racism yeah. and they know that, you know, the N word is bad and the clan is bad and this is bad and that is bad, but they've never seen it hurled at anyone before. Yeah. And I wanted that to be seen. Well, that was the thing is like, it was so ugly. Uh, just, you know, I, I guess you could, you know, if you go, there's like a zoom thing on a corporate and you go and have troll them or something with like a little funny thing, whatever. Uh, but this was just like so cowardly and like, hidden behind a web like you know they're not showing their faces they're just like saying the n-word to two black women who are expressing themselves and it was just so fucking damaging yeah like just it just made me lose faith in humanity it was mm -hmm. just like oh my god i can't believe like this actually happens in 2020 yeah, still 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 and you're right that you have to expose it because a lot of people think like oh there's no racism in canada yeah, which fuck. i don't understand i don't know how they could say that <laughs> you know it's like really yeah. you know? But um, but like like Don and I have had this conversation before, and it's like we can't expect people who've never experienced racism right. to to see it or to yeah. be aware of it or to be really cognizant of it, you yeah. know. So it's like, you know, despite um, the ugliness that's happened over the last few um, months, um, I'm glad that more people are feeling woke or taking the time to learn and and understand. Um, because I know I've posted some stuff and the number of messages that I've got from people who've known me for years, decades, and people who've just met me like within the last year or two who were like, I had no idea. Hmm. Like, oh my God, I'm sorry you had to go through that. And, you know, just because like if I talked about it, I would be talking nonstop. Right. About like microaggressions and, all your, you know, yeah. and macroaggressions and discrimination and all kinds of stuff nonstop. Yeah. And it's exhausting. <laughs> it really is exhausting. And, you know, it's unfortunately, it's something I've gotten used to. Right. You know, you should never get used to something like that, you know, but well, I just I, have my thing to do. And, and I guess as a white person, like to me... I have my privilege where I can, you know, tune into it and be like, oh my God, this is awful. But then I can like just, okay, if I want to shut it off, I can shut it off and walk away and not have to be subject to it. Mm -hmm. But if you're, you know, a black person in Canada and you're always subjected to it, it's just like, well, you can't turn it off. You can't. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, that's insane. It's just, it's just a part of life. Like things yeah. that, that most people take for granted, you know, stopping in a small town for example don and i were joking about it but it, it's serious it's real it's like you could be driving along you know the 417 or highway 400 or something and be like oh this is such a pretty town let's let's duck in and take a look i'll think twice <laughs> before because i'm like 
this could be, you know, headquarters for some, you know, Aryan nation's place. I have no idea. Right. You know, and I don't want to find out too late when they've surrounded my cars with tiki torches and Jesus. stuff, you know. So it's stuff like that. I've got to say nothing like that has ever happened. Yeah. Thank God, knock wood. Um, but it's something I think about, you know, especially I'm, I'm alone. I'm driving, you know, I went to um, Pembroke on Saturday to pick up a cat, another oh. cat. <laughs> and I was like... I've never been here before. This is like north, and it's probably pretty white. Yeah, I've never been yeah. to Pembroke, but I assume it's uh, <laughs> exactly. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And a friend of mine uh, grew up there, and when I told her I was going, she was like, "Don't get out of the car. Wow. Don't don't go to Tim Hortons." She was just telling me like, "Just go, pick up get the cat, cat, get the and fuck get out, out. <laughs> <laughs> get the fuck out." You know, like don't st- unless you have to in an emergency, just don't. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I took that to heart. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So. It's, uh, and I think I've become more aware of things over the last few months than before, you know? I mean, I think, I, yeah, definitely I've, I've seen it just through social media and like seeing what's being exposed and uh, learning a lot and listening. And uh, yeah, over the last few months, it's just been very eye opening to see yeah. how much prevalent it is in Canada. And yeah. Because I mean, I, bro- I grew up in northern New Brunswick, uh, extremely white. <laughs> like, just, there was one, uh, black kid in our high school that's it in the whole Rest, high school the whole high school <laughs> in all of new brunswick all of, <laughs> well in my high school at least in, in bathroom new brunswick um he was actually it's uh he no and it, i i don't know his his perspective on how he if if he experienced racism like everybody loved him uh he was great he was uh from haiti originally he was adopted by a white family and turned out to be my cousin's brother-in-law and it was uh, later on uh, but you know everybody loved him and he was a great friend with everybody but um, that was like that was it that was the only black person I knew for like you know yeah. until I moved out of uh, of there and you know yeah. I, I lived in Montreal I lived in Paris I lived in other places where much more multicultural but right. like I grew up completely in a white environment and mm-hmm. I did not know right. what was going on in the rest, the rest of the world really. right because the thing is you can grow up in uh in a what's the word homogenous environment but i'm sure your parents didn't teach you hate no no that's no. the difference yeah, yeah that's the huge difference like you could grow up just surrounded by people who just look like you yeah but if you're not taught hate yeah you know it's it's um you're open to meeting uh people of different cultures and different backgrounds like i think that's a huge difference because hate is taught yeah. That's something that's taught. Yeah, for sure. You know, like it's learned and it's taught. And just as how we can learn it and teach it, we can, you can unlearn it. It, yeah, it can exactly. be unlearned. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's hard, but it can be done. And it's probably harder to unlearn something the older you are, too, I'm assuming. Yeah. Because it's I like think so. like learning a new in- musical instrument, for example. Like, you know, if you're over the age of 21, your brain is, you know, the plasticity mm-hmm. of the brain is already set in place. Right a lot harder to learn new languages new things so if you're really set in your ways and if you're like 80 and you you know you're racist it's probably then well your whole been your whole life yeah. yeah yeah it's happened you know i've seen you know documentaries of people who've you know at you know at advanced age have like seen the light and and uh they've evolved but again i think that that that's something they're willing to change or they're willing to learn yeah because I think that's the only way that that can happen. Well, maybe there's a there's a catalyst for change exactly. that happens in, in yeah, older age. Yeah. Oh, I kind of I hope that I get wiser with age too. Maybe yeah. you get to a point where you start to realize, oh, we're all one humanity, mm-hmm. we're all one people, and we're all connected. And being and, you know. being different is is fine. You yeah. know, it's 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 not a bad thing. It's good. You it's know, a beautiful it's, thing. It's really. a beautiful thing, yeah. exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So there are a lot of. Uh, a lot of learning, like on my end too. Like um, I posted something a couple of weeks ago, and it was um, sayings that were that were like their origins were racist. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them I had no idea. So I, it, I mean, I was some like, of them I knew is like you know cracking the whip or something like that. But it, like, yeah. but then uh, some of the ones I, I yeah I remember seeing mm-hmm, that like know, the peanut the, gallery one. Yeah. I, yeah exactly. I didn't know that. Yeah, no, I didn't exactly. know that. Yeah, no. You know, I'd heard that all my life, but had no idea it was like a racist it had a rooted in, rooted in racism yeah. exactly so basically it was saying that you know the it was like the balcony the cheap seats that usually was reserved for black yeah, people and exactly because it was yeah. se- segregation and you know the worst seats were put up where the black people were put there yeah. And, yeah, exactly. and everything yeah. so yeah and it's th- yeah there's been a lot of learning on my end too yeah on my end too you know 
And uh, I know one thing that was annoying me was that like people would contact me with good intentions, but they were like looking to me as like the voice of like all black people <laughs> sort of thing. And it's like, like how, how there's white privilege. I have a, a degree of privilege myself that I grew up comfortable you know, okay. my parents were professional. My parents were married, you know, till death do they part, till my father passed away. They were married almost 49 years. Wow. You know, I had a stable childhood, no drugs. I smoked cigarettes, but I, I don't anymore. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, yeah, like I had... <laughs> you grew up in Montreal. Exactly. You grew up in Montreal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Poutine cigarettes. That's just the... <laughs> Poutine and cigarettes. That's the exactly. diet of a teenager. <laughs> exactly. That's what you did, you know? Yeah. And, um, yeah, so I had, you know went to good schools and educate and stuff like that. So I have a degree of privilege that that um, I can't speak for all black people. Yeah, sure. You know, I don't know what it's like to grow up poor. I don't know what it's like to grow up with, um, you know, parents having to work multiple jobs to, um, you know, to make ends meet or, you know, having that, you know, instability about um, live, where, are we, where are we living today? Right. Are we going to eat today? Like, I, yeah. fortunately, I never... I never experienced any of that. Yeah. People assume I have that. Oh, you pulled. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you've pulled yourself up from the bootstraps. No, <laughs> no, bitch. I grew up. <laughs> I grew up like solid middle class, yeah, yeah. upper middle class, if you will. You know, and yeah. yeah, it's like, yeah, and it's still amazing when people are like, "You went to private school? You used to figure? Sk- you like hockey?" It's like, God damn it! I was born in Canada. Yes, I like hockey. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. God's sakes, like, it's 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 funny. It's almost funny. Um, Are you a Habs fan? Well, the thing is, technically I am because I'm from Montreal and you, you get killed if you're not. Yeah. But I came out as a Pittsburgh Penguins fan when I moved to Toronto. I've been a Penguins Whoa. fan since Mario Lemieux was drafted in 84, oh, wow. but I had to like hide it when I was in Montreal. But I was like, well, I'm a Pittsburgh fan. At least when you're I'm, not a Boston fan. No, I'm not a Boston <laughs> fan. Never, never, <laughs> never. <laughs> Oh, now that now your your Crosby a joke makes sense. Exactly. Just a little more. Yes. Exactly. There Everyone's like, really him? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I like I'm a Habs fan just because I'm a Montreal girl, but uh, my heart's with the Penguins. Oh yeah. man, it's gonna be a tough uh, round there. Oh. Yeah. I watched it's the, weird. Yeah. So it was on TV when we came in here, and it's. There's no one in the stands. I know, right? It's like weird, just oh. very weird. So, yeah, they lost against Toronto last night, uh, exhibition mm. game, Montreal. I don't know how they're gonna do, but it's gonna be tough. I don't uh, even know why they're doing I don't this. Know. Just scrap it and start another season. You know? Yeah, to be honest, like I was actually not relieved, but I, you know, I always watch the playoffs every year. I'm a I'm a fan because it's sort of in my blood. I'm a Habs fan because my father was a Habs yeah. fan. My grandfather was a Habs fan. It was like sort of this thing. I would be probably shunned from the family, <laughs> disowned if I exactly. wasn't a Habs fan. Uh, <laughs> but it, it, like for me, it had this sort of emotional connection because, uh, so one thing, uh, my uh, father's father uh, was paralyzed from one side of his body after a workplace injury when my father was around 10. Okay. So he grew up with a father who was like paralyzed basically for most of his life. And one of the things that they bonded over was watching hockey together. And I remember actually my dad on Saturday nights would go to my, my grandfather's like home. Like he was in a home even you know in his later years. And he would just sit by his bed and they would watch hockey oh, together in a little, tiny little TV and all that. And then when I started watching TV with, hockey with my dad, I think like that was his mm-hmm. way of bonding with me as well. So, um, and now my, both my boys are born in Ottawa and I really want them to be like, you know, have fans so we can at least watch hockey together. And are have they that Senators sort of fans? Well, they're still too young to okay. really know, okay, but, I'm, I'm, and my wife is a big sense fan. So it, oh, there's she? a big rivalry in, in the <laughs> household, in the house. okay. all that, but, um, all that to say is that, you know, I, I watch playoff hockey and, but sometimes I feel like, oh my God, what am I doing inside watching hockey when it's May and it's spring? I know, it feels and it's like, weird. Yeah. And then now this year I've been like taking long walks. I've been going outside a lot more not mm-hmm. watching any sports at all I've been kind of like this I've been kind of liking it oh really like yeah, I've just, missed hockey but uh, I missed it some of it but some the other way I'm like oh I feel like more freedom I can mm-hmm. actually like not watch it and not, exactly because you know. I have um, the game center live oh, you so got, I could you see do? all the games and yeah. so that's all I was doing like between shows it's like okay what games can I watch and stuff yeah, yeah. like that and 
and uh, yeah, I, I missed it at the beginning, but now it's like, okay, I'm gonna have to make time <laughs> for that. And I, I don't know where I'm gonna put that time or get that time, but we'll see, yeah. we'll see, you know. And I was supposed to go to a game, I think it was the 3rd of April or something. It was, Pittsburgh was coming and I had tickets and everything. Against the Sens? Against the Sens, yeah. Oh. And uh, it was canceled, obviously. Yeah, obviously. So, yeah, yeah. So I was like, well, eh. <laughs> so I try to go to a game at least every year. Yeah. You know, so I used to go in Toronto. Oh, uh, well, actually, I had the, I had Hamilton tickets for May 30th. Yeah, I was supposed to go see that, too. At the NEC. <laughs> and yeah. uh, mm-hmm. then they sent us an email being like, oh, your ticket is now January uh, 2022. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I'm, I'm sitting on, <laughs> like, know $300 gonna... tickets. I don't want to wait. Like, I'm just going to get a refund. Yeah. Like, Same thing happened with me. Like, I was supposed to see... Um, Trevor Noah in September. Yeah, I did. I have the same ticket. Yeah. Land downs. Yeah, yeah. And now it's, I think it went to t- either 21 or 22. Oh. And they're like, you can keep it or, or you can get yeah. refund. I was like, I'll, I'll take a refund. And, you know, if we're if out of lockdown back. next year yeah, yeah. and the tickets are still available, I'll buy them again. I, you know? I have to show you something if I can find it, hopefully. But uh, I was in, in Pittsburgh actually last November for a conference. And this conference has been going to like the, the year before. It was in Texas. It was, was in San the Antonio. furry con- the what? furry conference? Yes, exactly. The furry. <laughs> the the fur- furries. The two times I went to Pittsburgh, it was a furry, furry conference and it was weird. <laughs> like, you went for a furry? Yeah, for I didn't actual- go for, no, I didn't go for the furry. You just happened <laughs> to be at the same hotel as the furries? <laughs> My two close friends lived there at the time and I went and when we were driving they lived near the, I can't remember the bridge they lived by but when you just crossed the bridge yeah there was a convention center and all the furries were there wow <laughs> they're just walking around in their costumes and it was weird <laughs> and I was like I have to make a note of when this is so I don't come then and so I don't come yeah, back and next year time. I went the same time so <laughs> I was like damn it <laughs> <laughs> I was not one of the, Even if I was, I probably wouldn't admit that I was there for that, you know? <laughs> you can tell in that costume of that. I was Sonic the Hedgehog or something. I don't know what, what they're into. But. And it's like ripped Sonic. Yeah. <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog's all swole, you know? Swole with like a slip. Like, exactly. It's like a and mix like, of like, I can wear this for Comic Con or furry comic. Exactly. And it's yeah. weird. It's God. just so strange. <laughs> And the thing is, like, they, apparently those costumes are really expensive, too. Yeah. I, I don't know if they're actually, like, fucking in those. Because you don't want to get any, know. like, bodily they, they fluid. They say, oh, them. it's not sexual. But uh, I think it yeah, is. Sure, I think yeah. there's some some yeah. kinky kinkiness <laughs> happening in those costumes. At least a foreplay. Yeah, exactly. At least they got started. Yeah. You know? But, yeah, that would be a lot of dry cleaning, too. <laughs> um, so, so I was in Pittsburgh for a conference. I was there by myself. And uh, on the Saturday, Pittsburgh was playing against the Leafs. And um, I I showed up uh, I showed up there seeing if there were any scalpers you know for like mm-hmm. cheap tickets and they were like super expensive I couldn't get anything so I waited I watched the uh, first period in a bar and then I went outside between the first and second and the Pittsburgh were losing so bad that people were leaving oh man and I got this one ticket from this one guy who was just like yeah take whatever and I tried to scan in and they were like no no reentry it's like oh, fuck so I tried a different exit different entrance and then i was like oh i just went out for a smoke and i came back whatever and then he's like okay whatever i look at the ticket and look at how close i was to the actual game <gasps> oh my they're playing God. they're playing it the looks tournament. like you're on the ice i'm literally like <laughs> on the front <laughs> like right. you're here the ice is right there i was oh yeah God. i was that's super close it was super, super close, close and it was a free game i was just like that's just amazing snuck in there and uh it was amazing i had a great time but mm-hmm. uh yeah so pittsburgh and toronto game is is great got to see crosby i got to see matthews and all that and, oh uh, yeah up close that's so. awesome that's awesome so that was fun yeah pittsburgh <laughs> is great i uh, andy warhol museum is great yes yes i, did I go was there. there three times man it was amazing my friends lived down the street from it they lived down the street from the andy warhol museum and then um the baseball park, PNC Park, yep. was right down at the end of the street. Like we went to, a, I think it was the second time I was there. We went to a Pirates game and we walked there. Hmm. And then I think just beyond that is Heinz Field, where yeah, yeah. the um, the Steelers. Steelers, where the yeah, Steelers yeah. play. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then I saw one of the um, one of the hockey announcers. Oh yeah. Yeah, and I was like. <laughs> and my friend used to laugh because I watched all the Pittsburgh games and they would give you the local feed. So you'd have like the local commercials and stuff. They've changed the format now, but 
you'd see all the local commercials. So we'd be talking on the phone and I'd be like, oh, is that this, that, the other? And she's like, you know more about Pittsburgh than I do. <laughs> and I'm like, I see it when I watch the game sort of thing. So right. she always got a kick out of that. <laughs> <laughs> Fun bit of trivia that actually I think I learned from uh, Jerry Hodges is mm -hmm. that uh, Pittsburgh is one of the f only cities where all three professional teams have the same colors. Yes, the black Steelers and gold. Steelers and black and gold and the Pirates yeah. as well. Yeah. And then so. there was a dispute between Pittsburgh and Boston because Boston complained when Pittsburgh had changed their costume, well, costumes, changed their uniforms to the like a gold, like a yellow gold and black and... I mean, it is the same color as the, the Bruins, basically. Yeah, but yeah. they were saying it was exactly the same and that they had to change. And mm. they, were, they went into some, like, arbitration. But Pittsburgh was allowed to keep their uniforms because it was a different shade of yellow. It wasn't the exact oh, shade really? of yellow. Yeah. But uh, one of their... It looks pretty similar. Yeah, but, like, one but of their... But they're home and away, it doesn't matter. Anyway. Exactly. But, yeah, but, but, like, one of their older, um, their older uniforms, it was, like, a paler yellow. But they have a uniform now that looks like the Bruins. It's, like, the same, like, yeah. mustard yellow. Yeah. And the black, it looks the same. So I, yeah, it's it's the same. <laughs> it's the same. <laughs> it's pretty it's, much the same. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like their blue ones, actually. To be honest, I don't. I'm not a big fan of their Pittsburgh blue the blue, uh, blue jerseys. Because they had blue jerseys about ten. But they, are you talking about their Winter Classic ones? Uh, I don't know. I just like, sometimes I would see them wearing blue, and it's just like yeah, I was like, ah, no, it okay. doesn't do it for me. I don't know why. Because I know the the black the black and gold ones that they had that came out like a year or two ago. At first I didn't like them, but then I was like, mm, grew on me. Yeah. 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 But yeah, there's some I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? I'm not picky, but I, I'm not. Um, so going back to what I was, we were talking about earlier, um, right. <laughs> uh, how, how did you get into comedy at, uh, you know, so you started about a year ago. Yep. So this is very fresh for you? Very fresh, still fresh. So was this um, like a decision that you want, this is something you always wanted to do and you finally did it or? Yeah. I always wanted to do it since I was about 15. Wow. About 15 years old. And I saw Delirious by Eddie Murphy and I was yeah. like, oh, that looks so cool. And I've just always been interested in it. I love stand up and I would like rent VHS. That shows how old I am. I'd well, go to like Blockbuster like, and rent VHS tapes and stuff funny, like that. Funny funny story, my <laughs> parents rented uh, Raw, Eddie Murphy Raw, because <laughs> from the local convenience store, because they're like, Oh, Eddie Murphy, he's a he's a Can't funny guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this should be like a family friendly thing, like Nutty Professor or whatever. Yeah, no, right. like, <laughs> should have got the shock of their lives. Yeah. <laughs> And we actually watched it. We loved it so much, my oh, brother and I. That's hilarious. And uh, so, yeah, that was one of my first exposures to comedy was probably yeah. uh, Eddie Murphy. Yeah, because <laughs> uh, yeah, Raw was amazing. But for me, it was Delirious and um, Bill Cosby. Um, yeah. He had a, a, a concert called Himself that was just hilarious. Which one was it? It was called Himself. Okay. Yeah. I can't remember where it was filmed, but it was around the same time. So this would have been early 80s. Because I know the first time I saw it, I was at like a sleepover at a friend's house and we watched it and we were all rolling and laughing and everything, yeah, yeah. you know, R.I.P. Bill Cosby. <laughs> well, <laughs> Have yeah. fun in jail. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Hashtag me too. Oh, know? God. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I have to confession to admit, uh, I had never listened to any Bill Cosby albums before the quarantine. Okay. <laughs> and to me, so Bill, so I was, I was born in 83. So do the math. Um, mm. To me, Bill Cosby was like the jello pudding guy, yes. fat Albert, the Cosby show, <laughs> yeah. like, you know, uh, kids say the darnest things, all those things, mm -hmm. whatever. So I, I never knew him as a stand up as a comedian, comic. Yeah. And then since, for some reason, since the, the quarantine, well, I guess it's because I got Spotify premium and now I, I'm listening to like, you get everything, yeah. everything. So I've been going on super long walks uh, almost every night. And I just put on a comedy album and I just take a walk. Mm -hmm. And I must have, I, I think I've listened so far to about 10 of his 14 albums that are on, on Spotify. It starts back in like 63. And holy shit, he was, was he good. amazing. He was, he was. Ground, he was like so just groundbreaking, game changing stuff and super clean. Yeah, super yeah, not clean. a swear word. And not even even the word. subject matter was, yeah, was clean. Very, very, know? very clean. I, mm -hmm. I have a joke, it's like super clean, uh, just like his criminal record until a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Exactly. But, but he was squeaky clean. Yeah. He really was. And it was like, it just made me realize, like, oh my God, you can be 
super funny this way, but is I feel like he almost turned into one of his characters or something. Like something yeah, happened. Something happened. Yeah. Something in '69. So I, because I was listening to them chrono- chronologically, uh, in '69, uh, one of the albums that he put out uh, had something about Spanish Fly. Oh. <laughs> and then it started to get a little dirtier. Okay. And so I think that's when his mind sort of like shifted a bit, and I'm. I'm not doing like a fucking expose or like a, <laughs> like a <laughs> yeah, this research isn't a conspir- project. Or conspiracy <laughs> channel. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it might be. Who knows? Who knows what this it'll, is? It'll morph into one. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, I, I yeah, I just now I'm actually like I hate to say, but I'm like a, a fan of Bill Cosby's earlier work, and uh, it's it was hard. brilliant. Yeah. It was brilliant. It was yeah, game changing for sure. Mm-hmm. At the time, like nobody was doing what he was doing, and and so many of my my comedic idols have him as an idol yep. so i'm like okay well it's a big deal with bill cosby so i listen to it now i'm like oh my god yeah he's brilliant. yeah it's like i i get it now yeah, yeah no he's really really good it's true can you can you separate the artist from the art um i can i can like at first at first i couldn't it yeah. was like i can't like same with michael jackson i was like i can't listen to his stuff i, oh, I just can't it's so but good i know but i can because like i was what 13 or 14 when Thriller came out and the video and the dance moves and everything you know it was it was huge it was like life-changing for me oh yeah that was so one of the best performers of all time like his performance at the the Super Bowl whenever it was like the Pepsi Cola halftime show whatever and he's just like doing this for like five minutes and and then everybody's like going insane it's like that was a moment in history that you can't really yeah yeah, exactly you'll never get that back and yeah, so I, I can, and say like even say with Louis C.K. Hmm. I love Louis C.K. Me I went too. to see him in Detroit oh. maybe five years ago or I've something. I've never seen him live, but I'm such oh, a big fan. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And then I was like heartbroken when, <laughs> when the whole he jacks off in front of people sort of uh. thing. I was like, oh, but I still love him. But I'm like, I love him, but don't leave me in a room alone with him. No, that's my that's my thing. <laughs> and like when his. Uh, he dropped a new special a few months ago, and I bought it. I downloaded I it. I bought it too. Yeah, because I, I five dollars. Yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah. I love him. So oh. it's yeah, I, like I feel kind of e eh sometimes, know. but it's just they're so good. <laughs> like, they're just so good. <laughs> it, I feel like actually quarantine has made me because before I probably wouldn't admit that I was like listening to Bill Cosby because you know or Louis C.K. But now as as like quarantine is like oh I can just do this on my own and mm-hmm. like it's all my like hidden little my guilty pleasures <laughs> guilty almost. Pleasure. <laughs> um, one of the th- things I've thought about though, and I don't know if it makes sense, but I think because of all those those guys guys men that you talked about obviously uh, are in a way so brilliant. And also so fucked up. Yeah, they're flawed. Yeah. They're very flawed. I feel like to be brilliant in comedy or in any sort of performance, whatever, you almost have to be sort of messed up in the head. Yeah, it seems like you have to have some kind of some kind of kink or weirdness happening. Well, like some you, you something. You can't be normal if you want to be one of the persons to do something that's completely abnormal you know what yeah. i mean like because louis ck's mind goes places where nobody would even think of <laughs> exactly. going right so you can't really be expect him to be like okay well he's going to come up with these brilliant premises and these brilliant jokes and that he'll are be totally normal and, and on his re- uh, regular uh, life you know it's like off well, stage he's totally normal you can't have it both ways <laughs> no. right exactly. like it's going to bleed through like you might try and keep it separate yeah but at some point it's going to bleed through like it's going to show up in your work or show up in your life or something. Right. And know? I mean, his whole career, he's been telling us how much of a weirdo creep he is. Yes. And he was telling <laughs> us that he's like jerking off all over the place. And we were like, ha, 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 ha. Till somebody said, no, he did that to me. <laughs> yeah. Know? He was like, no, no, that it's wasn't true. a joke. That was actually, tr- <laughs> it was true. We were all like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I, and I look at it oh. like even like, you know, comedians at, at our level that, um, like we take things from either we like make stuff up that's like you know to get the funny you're gonna look at something at a weird angle right you know or you're gonna take something uh that that you live that you experience that maybe it was something that was embarrassing or painful and you're gonna make it funny yeah you know that in itself is a little fucked up you know it <laughs> like is. you take a traumatic experience and make it funny but I think that's part of the therapy, though. That's yeah. like the 
part of if you can laugh in the face of trauma and you know it sort of get, gives you power it gives you power it's true it's um, true i think you know, for a lot of people comedy is therapeutic has it been therapeutic for you yes, at all yes yes yeah? and i didn't realize how much until we couldn't do it anymore right because like the first i think it was towards the end of the first month or like going into two months like i hit a wall and i remember one day just sobbing just crying and mm. You know, um, I eat my feelings. That's how I cope. I yeah. eat and I drink <laughs> my yeah. feelings. Same. And like, it was getting really bad. And I was just like, I couldn't get out of bed. And like, it was just, I was just miserable. And I was like, okay, what's changed? It's like, okay, the world is ending. We all, we're all going to die. But apart from that, <laughs> apart from that, <laughs> apart from that, other, than that. <laughs> other than that, what's changed? <laughs> and I was like, okay, like, I'm still working. I still have my job. I can work from home. Yeah. Um, I'm healthy. I have a roof over my head. I don't have to worry about that thi- those things. What is it that's killing me right now? Mm. And it was not going, to, not going to shows, not performing and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. And so that's how I started doing the interview because the interviews and the, the online shows and the stuff Zoom like shows, that. Yeah. Because I was like, I have to get this, I have to this do out it. this yeah, yeah yeah I have to yeah. keep doing it I need something to look forward to yeah, yeah you know so that's how I got started with uh first with the interview show and then just sort of like spreading my wings and I joined a whole bunch of comedy groups in in cities that I would never get to go to as a comic yeah you know to perform in well um, that's so cool and that's what I meant when you were like very inspiring how ha- active you were in like you, you know you were doing a lot of zoom shows and all that and I was just, I don't know, I, I haven't I, felt... I, I was manic. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what that was. I was manic. <laughs> like, I was like, ah, I, I do all the here. things. <laughs> but it's true. I mean, when, you, when, you, when you're used to having this sort of like out of like this pressure valve that you need to like mm-hmm. blow off some steam and exactly. then you like everything... It's gone. It's gone and everything balls up and then just it's got to come out somewhere. Yeah, right? exactly. probably not going to come out the right way if no. you don't let it out. So it's like, <laughs> exactly. Man. It's not going to be healthy. No. <laughs> it is it won't be healthy we're, you know? my, my, we're talking about my functional alcoholism with a, a basically <laughs> I'm now a sommelier with all the wine that we've been drinking like every single night with dinner like my wife buys like 24 bottles of wine at a time and we're just like oh we're trying this new wine Whereas, <laughs> it's just alcoholism it's, it's, you know? I've been buying I shouldn't even say this out loud <laughs> I've been buying like the you know the 1.75 liters of vodka mm. two like every three weeks <laughs> I wait till four o'clock when I'm done work, and then I drink it out of a mason jar. <laughs> That's hipster. <laughs> exactly. So I have like maybe two of those because it's not like I'm not having. It's not a. Put it this way: when I go, like I'm going to Yuck Yucks tonight, I'm going to order a vodka soda. Yeah. It's just going to taste like club soda. <laughs> so I'm not going to taste the vodka in it because yeah. I think when I'm making it, I'm making like quadruple it's like a half and half <laughs> exactly it's like four ounces of vodka with yeah. you know so yeah. when i drink a regular one it's like this is water this, <laughs> i don't taste anything just keep them coming keep sort them. Of thing. Yeah. oh my goodness oh god <laughs> oh trevor's pad tonight is a crazy good lineup too yes like i know jennifer whiteford is on it david brennan yep um is don kelly on it i sure? think so yeah anyways it I'm should be good look. Have you been uh, following the comedy uh, competition a lot? Yes, I went. Um, I went on Monday okay. to see it. It was great. It was great. Yuck Yucks looks weird though, because it's. I think it can only have fifty people. Yeah. So um, the tables are just spread out. Yeah. It's like this. It looks like that's very sparse. Right. And everything, but it's still fun. It's like I don't care. <laughs> just seeing comedy. Yeah, just seeing comedy. I did comedy. my first uh, set on Monday at Swizzles. Oh, post, nice. Post. Well, post uh, COVID, but not really. But you know, nice. Yeah. Because I, I would have uh, been there if, but I had tickets to. Uh, oh, to, it's a good uh, thing you didn't see I bombed. Oh, so did you? Hard. <laughs> but I was like, I, I didn't give a shit. I was on there. I was like, I was late. I was before the headliner, so everybody was everybody's <laughs> bombing, and I just went up and like, fuck you guys. Like I don't give a shit. Like you've seen what people were doing. I'm just gonna talk about <laughs> shitting and blood or whatever. Fucking. <laughs> and it's been the first time people are performing. Oh, we're all rusty. Yeah, all rusty, rusty after yeah. four after four months, you know. Because I and know I'm not performing live until the tenth. That's my that's, that's my comp? comp. That's my competition date. Yeah. And even though I've kept up with performing, I was sitting in front of my computer doing it. Like standing yeah. up in front of people, it's going to be different. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's going to be. Uh, it'll it'll be interesting, but it'll be fun. 
Well, actually tonight, well, I don't know. I can edit this out later, but actually tonight <laughs> I'm having a couple of people over to my place because I'm going to set up a mic in the backyard and we're going to go over our comp sets. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because you're, are you next week? I'm on Sunday. On, oh, on Sunday. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm not even going to be here because I would have come. So, um, <laughs> but if tonight, open invitation if you want a spot for okay. to try out your okay. material. Okay, what time? Uh, about on 6.30. Okay. Yeah, so, and I live closer to Yucks, I guess, so-ish. Would be on your way there. Okay. Anyways, I'm just saying, put it out All there. All right. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> um, yeah, are you excited to go be back on stage? Yeah, like, this is I'm real looking deal? forward to yeah. it. I'm looking forward to it. Because, like, last, uh, two weekends ago... When the uh, when all the clubs opened, two of my good friends in Kingston were performing, so I was like, I gotta be there. So I went down. Oh, you went to Kingston. I first? went to Kingston. Yeah. Who's uh, uh not Jeff and uh, Jeff Nixon was. Uh, performing? Jeff Nixon's performing this weekend. Okay. Um, but it was Tom Hills and Ashley Perna. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, were features and oh. Pierre Bro. Oh was my God, the Pierre is great. Pierre, I love Pierre. Did I love you Pierre. Did you ever take Pierre's class? That's what I took I last too. year. Yeah, 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 I took it too. last August. Yeah, yeah, I took it last uh, February, I think it was. Oh, in February so, of, yeah, January, of 19? February. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm I took it out. August of, of 19 last yeah. year. Yeah. Oh, he's great. Oh, I love him. Yeah, I love so him. So I like, I look up to him and he's uh, he's my mentor, although he doesn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know well, it yet. Yeah. And uh, so I was happy to see him last week. He was happy to see me. Awesome. And, um, yeah, he was brilliant as always. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I have well, a couple. Well, he's a true performer. He's like, oh he's my an God. artist. He does his one man artist. show. Like, he yeah, I went to like, see one. Um, at the Gladstone Theater? At or? the Gladstone Theater. I think it was in, um, was it December? In the before times. <laughs> yeah, in the before times. <laughs> yeah, but I bought a ticket and I went down. It was winter, so it had to be like January or December or something like yeah. that. Like, brilliant. Yeah. Just so good. So good. Yeah, so. yeah, so many. Like the John D. one mm -hmm. and then his other ones and the uh, oh, yeah. gesture or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's uh did you did you like it? Did you like the class? I loved it. So was that basically your intro to stand up? Like you had never done it before. I'd never done it before. And then you took the class and then you start doing the circuit yeah. and all that. Wow. Yeah, because that's like I'd always wanted to do it. What I've prevented you before from doing stand up? Well, it a little bit of everything. Um, fear was the big one. Oh, yeah, fear sure. was the big one. Yeah, yeah. Um, then, like, my parents would have been like, no, you're not doing that sort of thing. Um, I think my parents would have uh, not approved really? of doing it if I, if I had started doing it in, like, my 20s or something. Um, and then, then, like, life got in the way. I got married. I got divorced. You know, and it was dormant, but I always, like, I always went to Just for Laughs. Went to, you know, as many galas as I could afford at Just for Laughs. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, my God. I saw so many good yeah, shows there. Yeah, so many good shows. Oh. Um, if And not just the big galas. I'd go to, you know, duck into a club that was just had a comedy night and yeah, watch yeah. that. So I did all of that stuff and always felt that I couldn't do it. I'd love to do it, but I'm too shy. I'm not I'm not funny enough. I, I can't do it. And it's like I never had any... Um, misconceptions about how difficult it is like i knew it wasn't easy like the oh, yeah. good people make it look easy well that's any professionals any, yeah. make it look make easy make it look sure. easy like yeah. you can't just jump up there no. unprepared no, no. You, unless you're robin williams but you know oh, that's that's yeah. uh few and far between one in a million yeah yeah, yeah. so i i had no uh, mis mis i was not misguided in thinking like oh yeah you just get up there and talk um so there was the fear mm -hmm. of getting up there and the fear of you know people throwing shit at you <laughs> or whatever just i was always afraid of getting heckled that was yeah. my big thing about like i could probably go up there and memorize these jokes or whatever but if somebody like threw me off my game oh, that yeah. would like i would just oh fucking, yeah exactly yeah, I, would die. I was yeah i was afraid of that and yeah. then when i moved to toronto so it was like dormant for a little while like the urge to get up get up on stage was dormant for a while, a long time. And then when I moved to Toronto and I started going to comedy clubs and seeing shows, I saw the absolute there mm. had the course. And I think I signed up and dropped out of that course. Really? At least eight times. Wow. I was, I was in Toronto for 17 years and it was like every other year I would sign up, drop out, sign oh, up, no drop way. out. I was just too afraid. I was just too afraid. Wow. And then, so in like the last, um, so my father passed in 2014. 
Yeah. And then my mom passed uh, about a year and a half ago, oh, wow. Thanksgiving of uh, 18. And then at the time I was trying to move to Ottawa just to be closer when my mom was sick. Yeah. Um, and then I got the job offer after she had passed. Hmm. And I was like, I'd be an idiot to not take it. Right. So I moved to Ottawa in February of 19 and it huh. bubbled up again of wanting to, to do it. And I was like, there's no reason for me not to do it. So my parents are dead, so they can't say anything about it. That you is know? so <laughs> fascinating yeah. in a way because I've always felt the same way about my parents. Because mm-hmm. my parents would not approve of, of my sets. They, they would, my, father, my father maybe would laugh, but my mom would be like, language, language, you know. So I felt a little freer. I don't want that to sound awful. No, but, no, but I've, I've yeah. felt that before where I felt like, oh, I, if my parents weren't around, I could be myself. And that's such a weird way to yeah. be because I'm sure they would have accepted me. They yeah, would, they would the like thing. My parents are, you know, they're still married, still alive and, and well. And uh, actually, when I took the class with Pierre, uh, my parents were in town and my dad actually came to see my set there. Oh, really? And that was the first time I was doing comedy in front of anybody I knew. And my wife and my dad were there in the wow. audience. And it went well, thankfully. And it, it was a clean set. I did it on purpose. I was like, oh, I'm going to try to do a clean set. And uh, I think my dad was has always been a big comedy fan. So I think, and he's like a super introverted person. He hates public speaking, okay. as do I, really. Uh, mm-hmm. I always had a fear of public speaking. So I thought, like, I could never do this. Like, I can. Yeah, I, can, I did too for you know. the longest time. And then something changed, and I wasn't afraid to public speak anymore. Yeah. But I was still afraid to try my hand at comedy. Well, yeah. it's so, it's so it's different, different than, you know, because I, I can do presentations for my work mm-hmm. in front of a conference. I can speak in front of a big room of people. Mm-hmm. But uh, to do comedy and, like, to have this thing where, like, okay, people are expecting you to be funny and you have to bring it. It's like, oh, my God, so much There's pressure. So much pressure, exactly. Uh, but my dad, uh, my dad was, I feel like he was really proud of me. Like He, he probably was. I think he saw that I could do something that he couldn't. And I thought that was pretty cool because every Sunday night I remember watching Just for Last with him and you know, we were big fans of uh, well at the time like do you remember Michel Courtemanche like, yes he was yes a yes physical, the rub, yeah, r- like, rubber face, rubber face yeah. Yeah. yeah he was, he was like, oh my god he was Montreal, so funny Jim Carrey almost yeah. sort of, but uh, um, so anyways yeah we would just watch stand up all the time as a kid all French stuff and uh, my dad I don't think he ever thought he could ever do it mm. But uh, it, since he retired, he's been actually been writing jokes and oh, like really? wordplay. So we were we we're huge fans of François Pérus. Um, so L'Album du Peuple and all that kind of stuff. And my dad is like the wordplay, like, God. He, like, he's he punny. Just, he's <laughs> punny. He's like dad jokes. <laughs> okay. But he, his dad jokes are so well crafted. Oh, like okay. he just go and, and he <laughs> leans into it like he doesn't he's not ashamed of it he's not like <laughs> he's not like no pun intended no I yeah intended the pun is intent <laughs> yeah it is intended yeah. <laughs> and i feel like i've he's rubbed off on me on, on a little bit because i use a lot of wordplay and puns in my 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 stuff but uh yeah i think i'm i'm doing it just to try to impress my dad i'm still trying to get that approval, that approval. I think, with him. <laughs> yeah because yeah. i felt free to do it like i was still scared because it was because I remember one of my closest friends and she came to see my very first set, like the graduation class mm. thing. And I remember we were in our like late teens, early 20s. And because I love comedy so much, I would try and like perform like with my friends, like make jokes and crack people up. And I knew I could make people laugh. Right. And she was like, you should really do this. You know, and I was like, oh, no, I can't. So when I told her last last year. I said, I'm starting um, a comedy course. Um, I think I started, it was like August. It was mid-August or something. And she was like, it's about fucking time. Yeah. She's like, about fucking time. <laughs> Thank God. <Yeah>. You know? <laughs> and the thing is, when I told like close, close friends, they were like, they all had the same reaction. They're like, finally, good. Yeah. Good. Just, just do it already. Just, just <laughs> <laughs> Shut up and do it. You know? <laughs> like this. You know, and it was like easily like, the best uh the best thing i've ever done you know it was just uh i loved the class so, so much was that your first ever set was that the graduation class uh, yeah, yeah absolute basically yeah, yeah not yeah. counting like the the weekly stuff yeah, where yeah. we do it in front of the class yeah, yeah. but yeah the uh the graduation class thing. that was my first 
and did it go well? Ever. It went really well. Uh, it so went you really got the well. Bug. You yeah. Got oh yeah. The, yeah. Oh yeah. I was just so, I was nervous like a week before, up until Pierre called my name, hmm. and then it just sort of faded a little bit. And actually, I watched it last night. I watched it again oh, last nice. night. I think I think it has like. 700 views on YouTube, but and like 650 of them are me, <laughs> probably because <laughs> I watched it over and over and over. And I was just like, I can't believe I did it! I can't believe I did it. And I know, right? when I got off stage, I was like, ah! I was just so like, put it this way I got off stage, it was Monday night, so I think the show ended like 10 30. I didn't sleep until Tuesday night, I was just up. Wow. <laughs> like, fired up and adrenaline like just adrenaline like, complete, like oh my god like a guy hit on me and i didn't even realize until like <laughs> later on you know because i had a bit about well a lot of my stuff is about like my failures at dating and that i miss signs and stuff like that and yeah. he came up to me at the end of the show he's like oh you're really funny i enjoyed your set i was like oh thanks he's like I'm sure a lot of men have asked you for your phone number. And I was like, no. <laughs> and he's like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Thanks for coming. And I walked away. <laughs> and I remember when he was coming towards me, I was like, hmm, he, he's not ugly. <laughs> you know? oh, man. But missed it. And it was hours later. <laughs> it was like two in the morning. What I'm would like, you do if a man asked for your number? I don't know. Okay, I don't bye. Know. Okay, see you. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what I did. And I was sitting on my couch, like probably watching the video, just rel reliving the whole night. And I thought about that and I went, oh my God, <laughs> he was hitting on me. And I shot him down like unintentionally, but I was just Ooh. so like, I got to go. <laughs> it's playing hard to get. I like it. <laughs> I didn't even know I was supposed to be got, you know, <laughs> like it was just... <laughs> I totally missed uh, missed it, you know, and I was funny. like, I need to focus more. <laughs> I need to calm down a little bit, you know. But yeah. yeah, I was I was hooked after that, and I don't think I did another set until November. Okay. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a good month, month and a half, and then um, then I got booked on Swizzles, and then um, the the turning point was uh, I did uh, Tasha's show. Um, Wellington Eatery? Yeah, the Wellington Eatery. Yeah, the, love um, that place, yeah. Uh, what, what's the... Laugh... No, not Laugh Factory. Um, uh, Whispers in Westboro? No, no, not Whispers at, at Wellington. Yeah. But I can't remember the... All You Can Laugh. All You Can Laugh. Yeah, yeah. All You Can Laugh. Yeah, all You Can Laugh. And um, I remember he... After I got... after It was after I did my set, he went up and he was like, uh, how long have you been doing comedy? And I said, this is my fifth set. And he was like, what? <laughs> He's, he's like, 15, 15, no, five. And he's like, oh, my God. And then the next day he gave me a shout out in the uh, Ontario, on the, in the Ottawa community. And then I was getting, like, friend requests and all kinds of stuff. And I got booked based on that to a couple of shows. And it just, it just uh, snowballed from there, you know? Well, because, okay, so we were just talking in the parking lot. Uh, I remember we did a show together at Yuck Yucks for Trevor's Pad during a Super yeah. Bowl Sunday. And it was Super Bowl Sunday, so this was the before times. Like yes, February, before whatever. Times, yeah. um, so it was, like, it was pretty empty because it was Super, Super Bowl, Bowl Sunday. Yeah. Like everybody was at home watching Super Bowl or whatever. And I remember, like, everybody sort of bombing, whatever, and you came on and you killed. Oh, and you brought you. the room. It was, like, maybe, like, 12 people, but it just really brought everybody oh, together. Oh, thank you. And then, you know, Don Kelly came on and closed it and just fucking killed, like, you know, like he's a professional. But I think you were the turning point oh, for that wow. show where you. you actually really, like, brought the energy oh, back thank up. thank you. Because uh, yeah. he came up to me after and he was like, you were really good. And I was yeah, like, yeah. thank you. you Don know? said that? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, you got good stuff there. Yeah. And I was like, oh, wow, you thanks. Don <laughs> approval. Yeah. It's <laughs> a good sign. But it's like, I just love it so much and, like, I um, like I rehearse and I practice and you know that's like say from now till um, competition I modified my set a bit before I came out to meet you yep. and um, so I recorded it just to see how long it is and then I'm going to record it again and I'm just going to listen to it over and over and over and over and over yeah, yeah. you know that's that's how I memorize it and I well it's actually and um, so uh, Amy Poehler had an interview it was like dinner with Don Rickles and uh, this was when he was older, uh, obviously. And uh, alive. Yeah, <laughs> well, and alive. And, uh, but, um, he, you know, he still had it. Even up oh, to he's this, brilliant. Right up to the right end. There, right up to the mm -hmm. end. And um, so, uh, you know, Amy was talking to uh, Don Rickles about, like, did you write your stuff? Or, like, apparently he would, like, just go up and fucking That's improvise what I heard, everything. Yeah. He's like, holy shit, how do you do that? 
He was yeah. just roasting people left and right, just improvising everything. Just on the spot. On the spot. It was just amazing That's stuff. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, crazy. Like, just the guy is, yeah, he was a genius for mm -hmm. sure. Um, but uh, Amy Poehler was saying how nowadays all these comedians in New York, because they, can get, like, they can't get as many spots as people used to be able to get back in the days, they will record themselves on their iPhones and then just listen to themselves on the phone and walk around all day and like listen to their set memorize it and all that and I was like oh maybe I should do that so I've been yeah I've been recording yeah. my set just like taking my phone recording my set like six minutes whatever and then trying to really listen to yeah. it and be like okay where what mm -hmm. can I change and because when you're writing it like on computer yeah. or writing it down, it's not, it's gonna, not you, the same the way you say you, it may not sound the way you write it may not sound natural when you say it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So you need to sort Modify of make it. it more like a conversation. Exactly. More less, than, less of a speech, mm -hmm. more of a conversation you're having with the audience. Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. So that's yeah. what I've done um, from the very beginning. Because I know, like, when I was a kid, like, not even as a kid, I still do it. <laughs> like, if I get a song, like, a song I like, I'll listen to it over and over and over yeah. to memorize the words, yeah. you know? Um, you good? I'm good for yeah. now, yeah. You'll have a half pint. Can you do it? Not of the premium beers, can you do like, I don't know, I'm not going to do it. Okay. <laughs> um, what are you going to say? Well, yeah, songs you like, you just listen to them Yeah, I would just listen to it over and over and, and memorize the lyrics. So I was like, yeah. I did that for like in school, my notes, like studying for a test. I'd read my notes and just listen to it over and over. Yeah. That's how I can absorb things. So I, I do it with my sets. You know, and um, what I, when it comes time to perform, I'll just have a list of just the keywords, like the titles yep. of the yep. things, just in case I like anything, I get heckled or something, and I, I know, right? and you know, I have a brain fart and lose my place. Then it's like, okay, that's the that's the next one, and, and continue. So it's like a safety, like a security thing. I too. know, and I hated that. So I went out at Swizzles on Monday, and I had this like bullet points of things, and I was like always referring. I I hate looking back at it usually I try to keep it in my pocket and only take it if yeah. I really need to especially for like a competition or something you want to yeah, be to exactly. seem like you're not relying on any any sort of tricks or uh, notes but uh, yeah I you know if when I'm doing new stuff it's like okay well this joke and then I see I see, sometimes I'll write stuff and like what the hell does that mean like <laughs> I've done that too. diarrhea huh <laughs> yeah, what I does had, that mean <laughs> like, I had one because I would always get my ideas driving Right, like oh, driving me too. to work, and I get the, for some reason, yeah, like, it just, just like triggers it or something. Yeah, yeah. And I had this bit, but I couldn't pull over to, to uh, write it down. And of course, by the time I got to work, I lost it. Yeah, and to, it's never come back. So I started using like the voice notes on the phone, or using Siri. I would be like, "Hey Siri, write a note about this," <sighs> thinking. And so I did that, and <laughs> when I got back, when I looked back at it, all it said was "whiskey dick." <laughs> and I'm like, what was I thinking? <laughs> what like, does that wh mean? What does that mean this, exactly? Yeah. Like, what? Like, what was I? Wh where was my mind going? Yeah. You so know? Much. <laughs> like, where was my mind going? <laughs> because I had the whole bit in my head, and so I was just like, oh, if I put a keyword, it'll trigger it. And all yeah, it said was yeah. whiskey dick, and I was like, I don't know. <laughs> you know. So now I try and just write a note that says, and I'll describe the whole thing, and at least I have it there, and then. You know, you can massage it and fix it up and everything. So yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's funny you say that because uh, a lot of comedians will say writing, having a notepad always handy with you is basically like having a net where you have all these like jokes falling down and you can like catch the ones. Yeah. Because if you don't catch them, they're gone. They're they gone. might be exactly. gone forever. You might not get that. And that you might get that thought back. back in like in the shower and you're like, oh shit, I don't have a pen, I don't have anything. <laughs> exactly. But it's funny you say that because just this morning I I was driving. Uh, I was going to pick up my son at, at, at camp, and um, I took out my phone. I had this I, I had this thought, and I was like, oh, shit, take a, Siri, take a note, and I'm going to read it to you right here. Okay. And then it says, it says, King in the Bushes, French translation. And that doesn't mean anything, but it's because Siri didn't understand me, maybe because of my accent. <laughs> but it's basically, it was peeing in the bushes, French, tra French translation. And it's because... When I have people over for my show tonight, I, I want to say something like, you know, uh, nobody's using, sorry, you can't use the bathroom inside. If you need to pee, you have to pee. Everybody's been peeing in the bushes. And actually, bush is the French word for mouth. So everybody's... <laughs> You know? <laughs> it was one of those parties. I don't one know if I'm going to go, but... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, uh. 
Got some slip and slide and water play and splash pads. But but it, Siri translated to king in the bushes. And so if, if tomorrow I would have seen that, I would be like, what the fuck are you talking what? about? Because <laughs> I have, where's my phone? Yeah, because I've been, I was trying to find like, like the, like an ideal way to, um, like keep track of jokes and stuff like that. And so yeah. I've been using Evernote, which has been working. A lot of people do, yeah. Yeah. I use just Google Drive. Okay. Because yeah. I was using, like I had a Word document before that I would type everything in. Yeah. But um, this has been working. So I have like the dead parent card. That's, that's, that's an idea, you know, or yeah. I've had to throw down the dead parent card, you know, um, what's another one? Have you been writing a lot since uh, yeah. quarantine? Yeah. 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 At first, I was writing like quarantine stuff, but then um, it just morphed into because I like I talk about like dating and like not having enough sex or having too much. Well, that's never happened, but <laughs> you know, but just things like that. And so it's like a lot from like my own experience, like my say my dating experience, or you know, like I tried to spice up my life and I went to like a lifestyle party in the fall. Oh yeah. And I was like this is not my thing <laughs> i don't like this this is not for me <laughs> sort of thing uh, well, at so least like you tried it yeah so yeah, it's like i have know. a bit about that and oh, yeah. yeah so i've got like a lot of stuff and some like i think what's holding me back is like should i really be saying this in public <laughs> you know there's yeah there's the, always that sort of mm -hmm. back of my mind thing uh, uh yeah like should i be saying this like well and again it's for me it's like well do i want my parents to see this if they come across it is gonna embarrass them with their friends and things like that whatever. yeah um, yeah so but i think at the end of the day you have to realize that you're just you're yourself and it's your mm -hmm. life and you can take yeah. ownership of your own life and take, exactly you know, and like you're one, okay with it exactly and like one of a bit um like some advice that um multiple um comics had told me like during like when i was interviewing them um they would say things like like own the joke like yeah. own it like don't go up there and say it and like be like meek about it or feel no. like embarrassed or apologize before you've even said no, the joke lean they're like just, it, like lean, just exactly boom. lean into it and just you know just say it just yeah, own it yeah. so i'm thinking that way yeah that it's like you know if someone's going to criticize me for it so be it that yeah. my experience it's i'm talking about my life and my experience and you know you can't tell me that that's not my experience you know yeah, right. there's some you know for some of it there's some comedic license you know but a lot of it is as i say it that's how it happened, you know, so. <laughs> and truth in comedy is so important. Like, you mm -hmm. to, to start with a little nugget of truth. And then yeah. the punch, like, I was talking with Michaela in the previous podcast about, like, you started with truth, but then the punchline can be ridiculous or whatever. Exactly. Like, that's the misdirection. But like, yes. at least if it has some truth, then you can, it's your joke. It's mm -hmm. like something that happened. Yeah. You know? Exactly. I've been, I've been really into storytelling recently, like, writing, writing on them. And I've written so much, so many stories that I'm thinking now, like, oh, shit, might, I might just well write, like, an autobiography. I'll have so <laughs> many, like, they're all, like, already laid out there. Mm -hmm. I can just write my own thing. Yeah. Um, but uh, what was there? I'll say, um, yeah, it's, it's so lifestyle party. I don't know what that entails <laughs> exactly. I don't know if you want to talk. But, uh, <laughs> but I've seen, since I'm doing stand-up, I will see myself getting into situations and being like, well, this is not something I really want to do, but maybe I'll get a bit out of yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And it, <laughs> exactly. You know, so you exactly. might actually do some stuff that you wouldn't before, but it's like, well, this yeah. might be a funny story. <laughs> it might be or, funny, exactly. It's a shitty, but whatever, yeah, it's you know? a good story because yeah. when I w I went to this party in December, like yeah, it was like maybe a week or so before Christmas, and at that point, I had just started doing a few more. I think I'd done five or six sets at that point. Right. Um, and so the experience was. It was cool. Like, I realized that this is not my thing. Like, I met someone. We ended up, like, seeing each other for a couple of months. So, win-win. Oh, cool. You yeah, know, yeah, it worked yeah. out. Yeah. Um, but, like, the entire... Like, I went in too naive. I was like, la-la-la-la-la. Like, I was the most dressed person there. <laughs> you know? Like, I was, like, covered. I looked like I was in a burqa compared to right. people there. You and showed up with your furry <laughs> outfit. <laughs> my furry <laughs> outfit. <laughs> my big big bushy tail like that, you know? yeah. but yeah like i wore a because it was a christmas party and so i wore this jumper like, that had like cats 
cats in outer space. Sort I thought of this thing. was an ugly sweater for Christmas party. You <laughs> said no. But then people had like Santa tassels and things really? like that, and I was like, wow, wow. Okay. okay, okay, okay. Like I knew what I was going going into, but I didn't think it was going to be like on like display so as much. Right. Like right people went off and did their own thing and yeah. stuff, and so the bit that I so wait, wrote. Where was this? Where's the address? I guess. <laughs> and the, the thing is, I went like I went to White Lake, which is like an hour and a half from here. Oh, so you wouldn't see anybody. You I went or, to the yeah. like the woods yeah, basically, yeah. and I was like, <laughs> as I was driving there, I had three people that I'd never met before, and I was like, I've got room in my car. I can take people. One of them I ended up going out with for a oh, little while, shit. so it worked. Oh, yeah. It yeah. worked. But I sat there trying to look cool. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. And so I wrote a bit about being what a unicorn. What was the drive back like? <laughs> the drive back, I was just like <laughs> shell-shocked pretty much. <laughs> shell-shocked. You know? <laughs> like, I was ready to leave like an hour after I got there. Because oh, I was like, God. this is not for me. And plus, <laughs> I was considered a unicorn. Do you know mm. what that is? Yeah. Well, that yeah. came up in the previous podcast. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I was the I was the only unicorn there. Wow. So I was very, very popular. After. Yes. Yes. You know, huh. it's like, I was like, okay, I'm, a, I'm an attractive woman. I get attention. But that was, it was ridiculous. Wow. <laughs> the amount of attention. Like just men, women, couples, everybody. Because it's like, it's rare for like just a, you know, That's an unattached. That's why unatta- they call it unicorn. It's exactly. Very rare. very rare that like an unattached woman shows up alone. Yeah. yeah. You know? That I'm not, you know, I'm not involved with anybody. And so everybody wanted me to play. And I was like, I'm not here to play. I'm just like. I'm just here to watch. I'm just what here. Do you <laughs> I don't know. Neither what, one sounds what, good. What, what, but I, I had a necklace. Well, they gave, like, they make you a name tag. And the guy who was making the name tag. Uh-oh. It's starting to rain. The guy who was making the name tag. Maybe move your camera. The, well, now we'll never know what happens. <laughs> we'll never know what end. happens. <laughs> this, is, this is the cliffhanger of uh, cliffhanger. part one. <laughs> the lifestyle oh, party. Do you want me to continue? Sure. Okay, no, it's up to you if you <laughs> want me to continue. <laughs> I think we're safe. I think we're, yeah. I think we we're won't okay. get electrocuted. I don't think no. so. But yeah. yeah, as long as the camera's... <laughs> where, where are you saying I'm... <laughs> so, um... Yeah, I was driving back, and so I had these people in the car with me, but, um, yeah, like, there was a hot tub, and people were saying, like, how are you going to go in the hot tub? And I was like, I didn't bring a bathing suit, and they're like, you don't need one. Ah! (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, no, this is not for me. This is really not for me. And, um, yeah, so, like, the, the guy I was seeing, he was, like, he was nice. He was very nice, but he wanted something open. And I was okay. like, eh, not really comfortable with that. And so it's not going to work if, you know, one person wants to open and one doesn't. No, so no. it's not going to work. Not on the same page. But no. it's, it did open my eyes to, like, different kinds of relationships and stuff like that. Yeah, so, for sure. So it's like, so I'm cool with, with something casual. Like, if it's, the thing is, it's like the rules of engagement have to be, um, discussed first yeah you know i don't want to go in thinking oh we're working towards something and he's like oh i'm just getting laid sort of thing yeah. you know as long as like both parties are on the same page i'm fine with that um but i don't think i would do it again <laughs> so i wrote this bit about being a unicorn like showing up to this party and being a unicorn and just how how it how it felt you know so just stuff like that have you done it before have you done it since have i done the, the, bit? the bit no no, because the thing is... Oh, thank you. Thanks so much. <laughs> awesome. Give me a little bit more cover there. there Wonderful. You thank you so much. <laughs> Double perfect. coverage. Is that going to Yeah, that's oh, so much better. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so much better. Um, the thing is, I had started... I was, I've been working on this bit since December, since after the party, because I was like, there are so many good nuggets in yeah. here it's, so is it like a full story like a almost no, like a it's, five it's, minute uh, well if I do the full story it would be like six minutes or I could even stretch it to eight minutes might be on your special then maybe you know? <laughs> maybe so I had a version of this man that was like testing me sort of thing because I look very young like I look I'm in my 50s but I look like I'm in my 30s and this man was probably 50s? I'm 53 yeah. you look great thank you <laughs> Like we said, black don't crack. Black don't crack. Hey, <laughs> exactly. You know? Exactly. So um, he probably thought I was in my 30s and like naive. And I, I look quite innocent too. 
and he, he was around the food wearing like this Hugh Hefner thing and nothing else. And I was like, he shouldn't be that close to the food. I just remember <laughs> thinking that that's so unhygienic. You know, at least close the robe or something. You know? And this was before COVID times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this was before. Yeah, this was before now, times. Like, no, no, no. Now it'd be yeah, like, no. he'd be shot now <laughs> sort of thing. And um, so I was just sitting and people were very nice. And the thing what I noticed is that every time somebody came to talk to me, either they set the most of the time they sat down next to me. Yeah. So we were like eye to eye. This man stood Stood right right, in front, right of, yeah. in front of me yeah and i guess i don't know if he wanted me to cry or scream or whatever Jeez. but all i wanted to do was is this thing on like tink tink <laughs> this damn sort of thing it was like you don't know who you're dealing with you know? started doing stand up <laughs> exactly hey everyone thanks for coming and he's like what are you doing <laughs> sort of thing. thanks for coming no pun intended <laughs> exactly that <laughs> joke's exactly. right here yeah yeah <laughs> So, like, I just remember that being, like, you're kind of an asshole <laughs> oh, to just, like, stand right in front of me like that, you know? Oh, God. And, like, expect me to answer your question. You don't know who you're dealing with either. Yeah, <laughs> Sort yeah. of thing. You don't know that I wrote a bit about you. <laughs> like this. I hope so. they see it one day. I hope they see your special one day <laughs> and that the bit is in <laughs> there. The bit is in, but there have been, like, different versions. So, this one that I finally... People in White Lake, if you're watching right now. <laughs> Watch out. Yeah, I'm coming yeah, for you. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> So um, this one that, I've, that I'm doing is just like a portion of like that whole evening, yeah. you know, that I was like, I need to do a bit about, about it. So it was just that little, little fraction. So that one is probably a minute, lasts about a minute. But I think if I were to talk about the whole experience, it would be at least six. <laughs> nice. you know? But I'm like, I don't want my whole time to be about that. It's I want to throw other things to, in. Yeah, when you yeah. have like, you're just trying your material. Mm -hmm. you wanna pack as much you can exactly now, but, uh, so yeah. i'm just doing uh that one minute nice. unicorn bit so oh, wow. yeah i can't i can't wait to hear it uh, i think we're gonna wrap it up because <laughs> yeah, we're getting, getting like, soaked right now. exactly Camera, we're it's not get electrocuted yeah, it's not exactly. safe anymore i don't have insurance <laughs> we don't uh, want to die <laughs> yeah and you're, yeah I, you don't i, your I, stuff I really can't up. wait to see you back on stage thank again you. and thank uh, you. yeah thanks so much for doing this oh no thank you for having me thank you for having me and that will be on your podcast yes yes Yes. If the invitation is still open. It's still, it absolutely. is still open and I would absolutely. love to have you as a guest. Awesome. Thank you so much, Simone. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank okay. you. Bye now. Bye everyone. Right. <laughs> that was awesome. That was really fun. That was fun. <laughs>